In Color, the continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington, Patricia Morrow as Rita Harrington, James Douglas as Stephen Cord, Peyton Place. While Elliot Carson searches in New York for his daughter, Allison, his wife, Constance, awaits the birth of their child. In the Peyton County Jail, Lee Weber waits to be judged for the murder of Ann Howard, and an anxious Sandy Weber seeks out Stephen Cord to help her with a difficult decision. Mr. Cord. Well, hello, Sandy. I was, uh, just coming to see you. You were taking a chance, weren't you? It's a little late. Uh, yeah. Well, I, uh, I want to talk to you about my husband. See, we, uh, have had a lot of trouble before this. You know what I mean. No, I don't know what you mean. Has, uh, husband and wife. Domestic problems, personal problems. Go on. Well, it, uh, it got so bad one time, I, I just took off. I upped and left the house, left town. Yes, I heard about that. Well, I, I... I tried to make it work, I really did. But, uh, we just weren't, uh... You know, uh... Compatible. Sandy, are you going to leave him? Everybody asks me if I'm going to leave him. Who's everybody? Well, Chris asked me. Well, did Chris ask you, or did he tell you to leave? Said. He said, go to Stephen Cord's office and tell him that Lee is something less than human. He's a monster, right? Mr. Cord, Stephen, would you still defend Lee if you knew he was guilty? I think there's a good chance that Lee is innocent. Now, I told this to Chris, and I don't mind repeating it to you now. What if something happened and you found out Lee was guilty? trying to talk to you. You want me to give up his case, but you can't quite say it. You can't really run out on the man you're married to, can you? No matter how much Chris pushes you, no matter how much he shouts, pleads, or weeps. I uh, shouldn't have come. You did what you had to do. Now listen to me, Sandy. There's only one person in this world who can make up your mind on the subject of your husband. And that's you. Regardless of how much you care for Chris, he can't do it for you. Lee is your husband, your responsibility, your problem. Now, if you're not sure about him, I feel sorry for you. Did you reach Dr. Morton? He's in bed with a cold. Oh? I told him the pains were irregular and about ten minutes apart. What did he say? Well, for you to keep off your feet, and if they stop, fine. If they get stronger and closer, I'm to call him right back. And he agrees with me. It's just a false alarm. I think you should call your husband. Not until I know. Well, just to be safe. Allison was two weeks late. Allison was the first baby. Second babies very often come early. Not this one. But you're already feeling pain. It's just nerves from the strain. I've been so upset about Allison's disappearance, and then Elliot decided to go to New York to look for her and call him. You don't know Elliot. He'd be on the first plane. This baby means so much to him. 
then you have no right to take the chance. But he'd come. If it's just a false alarm. What's there to lose? I want my husband to accomplish what he set out to do. But you're not even sure that Allison went to New York. Well, we both had such strong feelings. Well, even if your hunch was right, now he could make the rounds of every police station and still get nowhere. That's a very big city. At least he did the best he could. And that means something to Elliot. If, if Allison didn't come back, well, he'd always feel he'd quit in the middle. He'd always wonder if that extra few days he could have stayed would have made the difference. Which is more important? A fruitless search to have the baby without him? He can make it up to me. But if he fails Allison... Well, that shouldn't have to be your decision. It isn't. It's the baby's. Matthew could make it so easy if he'd... if he'd only wait. Wouldn't you be more comfortable in bed? I might. I'll help you up the stairs. If you got me a little milk, it might help the butterflies. All right. <gasps> oh. oh, Matthew's not going to wait. I'll call the hospital right away. And Mr. Carson. Thank goodness for airplanes. <sighs> oh. If it isn't too late. <laughs> so long? Two hours. I asked you to walk across the street from your office and it takes you two hours. Look, if you want to do something for me, counselor, don't send me any more books. I don't like them. Get my bail back. There's no way to have your bail reinstated, Lee. Look, you've got to get me out of here. Sit down. I've been sitting down all day. That's all I've got to do here is sit. I shouldn't have to remind you, Lee, but you got yourself into this spot. Yeah. Well, you're going to get me out. I can't. OK, then you give my brother to come by and see me. I just talked to Chris this morning. I got the impression he didn't want to see you again. I don't care what he wants. You get him here. Why? Because I am worried about him, that's why. He's not used to making it on his own. He's all mixed up, and he needs me out there with him. It's the other way around, isn't it, Lee? You need him. Why, you talk to him. You know he's turning against me. What did you say to him that drove him away? I didn't say anything to him. It's everything. He found out that it was his own brother that pushed him off the cliff. That I was the one that fixed it so he could never tell the difference between the day and night again. And that Alice McKenzie chick came along. And he couldn't lean on me anymore, so he had to lean on her. The only girl in the world that he was ever really serious about. She dumped him. All he's got left now is hate. Hate for everybody, especially for me. And that's not going to help your case. Correction, counselor. Our case. Don't try to use me, Lee. Look, I'm only trying to I tell you I know what you're doing, and I don't like it. I'm your lawyer, Lee, not your puppet. I don't think for three seconds you're going to con me into chasing Chris around, trying to convince him that you care about him. Whether it's going to help your case or not, now, the next time you want to talk to me, I want all the cards on the table. Understood? All right, counselor. I'm sorry. I just thought if you talked to if him... If I talk to him, I'll put it to him straight. With him, we have a solid defense. Without him, you're halfway to the state pen. And on beyond that. It's not going to buy it that way. Well, that is the only way it's being sold. Guard. Well, take good care of these books. They're on my library card, you know.
Rodney, do you think Lee Weber killed Anne? Grandfather, I don't want to talk about Anne. I don't want to talk about Stephen tonight, if you don't mind. What should we talk about, Rodney? The innocent days when you and Norman romped about the house, squirting each other with whipped cream? Look, I don't know why Stephen is handling Lee Weber's case, but I'm not going to condemn him for doing so. Because you owe him something? That's right, my life, to be exact. Well, if you feel that strongly about it, perhaps this is your golden opportunity to pay him back. What do you want? Stephen mustn't defend Lee Weber. That is the only person who can influence him. You must talk to her. You know, the last time I had a little talk with Betty, a private little talk, it almost cost them their marriage. Stephen misinterpreted it. Too bad it didn't. Oh, I suppose I have no right to say that. But I can't avoid thinking that you and Betty should be together. You know, I'm not quite sure what it is you want to do to Stephen, but don't try to do it through Betty or me. Grandfather, I came back here to live because I felt sorry for you having to live out the rest of your days in this mausoleum without any real family to talk to, to share things. You dissect me, just like you do everybody else. You run little tests on me in your laboratory to find out what I'm made of and how you can use me. I suppose I shouldn't expect you to grasp the concept of family rock. As you say, the other members. I know That's the rest of the sermon by heart. We are grandfather and grandson. We have to have a cooperative relationship. We have to be able to give. I'm sorry, grandfather. No sale. <laughs> 